residential tenants in Ontario have already started to receive notice that their rents are going up. First up, the tenant perspective. A chapter of the national advocacy organization, Acorn Canada. that they said it, the, the uh, 
electrical needed was two GFCIs, one in the, each in the bathroom and one in the kitchen. So we went to the LTV. She went against us. So now I have to be out before January 31st. I have COPD as well as many other health problems. It's just been a nightmare. My health has gone down, you know, an awful lot since this all began. You know, we're only little cogs on the wheel. We need help. And they have to do something. The landlord licensing is a, uh, hopefully a start. And um, I don't know. That's I'm just devastated. I still don't know where I'm going yet. You know, uh, the other people in my apartment have left. The guy who lived upstairs, he's um, gone. He pays $1,400 now. He says it's a shoebox. He doesn't even have a bedroom. It's like a bed sitting room. The other fella, he's couch surfing. And these people have jobs. You know, I just turned 65. So now I'm on old, old age pension. You know, and it's uh, it's awful. You know, there's there's a kick in the head for me again. You know, it's, it's just, I don't know. I'm just, um, I feel defeated by it. And I don't feel like anybody's got my back. Okay, that's about it. We have your back. Hi, my name's Darlene Wesley. I've been a member now for a little over a year. Wow. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's 22, maybe two years now, two years. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Just from the news, I, I saw the, ne the name Acorn. And um, so in November of 2020, I received an N13 from my landlord saying that he wanted to do um, renovations and they were so extensive that he wanted all of us out. But the only thing he said on the electrical was that he was going to change 40 outlets and say nothing about rewiring the whole unit. Mm -hmm. But that's what he told the board. Mm -hmm. And he also said that he was going to take out all the plumbing. We had a hearing which took over a year and a half to get the hearing. Wow. So we were in limbo for that long. Mm -hmm. And then we found out in May of 22 that we, the adjudicator sided with the landlord. So we have to pack up and go. My daughter lives in the basement. She had to be out by October 31st. And because I have health issues, they let me stay a little longer. And I've been there almost 20 years. The reason why he started all this, because my neighbor had passed away and he renovated her apartment and he received $1,200 for the exact same unit that we're paying six for, six and change. So he thought, cash cow. And I asked the observer, or the adjudicator one day, mm -hmm. what is the reasonable amount of time that they have to fix the place up? And she said, that's a legal matter and you have to ask the, a paralegal. And I asked a paralegal and they said, there's no time frame. So I don't know, it, like there's, they're, you're up in the air. They, they're they putting you out on the street. I'd still be looking yeah. because I'm on old age pension now. Yeah. You know, my daughter's on disability. It's hard to find a unit. Yeah. And especially when you are low income, landlords want now, they want um, a resume, they, uh, a work resume, a, a, you know, you Credit name it. They, yeah, they're, they're building condos. Who? No, nobody. I don't know what the generation, your generation is going to do about housing. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. And I don't know if your lifetime, if you're going to own a house. No, I don't think so. Yeah. This tent, National Tenant Union, um, during this conference, what did you learn that's happening across Canada? Oh, it, it's rampant everywhere. Renovations. Renovations are rampant all across Canada, wow. from out west to here. The incumbent on me to mention that Hamilton is losing between eight and ten affordable market housing units for every social or not-for-profit housing unit that's built. That's a fact. 
The wait list is almost 7,000 people for affordable housing in this city. Talk a little bit about Carl the Tenant. Carl the tenant that used to live in a building was a small brownstone. It was really nice. We moved in, rent was $1,100. God, it needed some paint and a little fixing up, but it was a nice building. We paid our rent on time every month, like a good tenant. We even picked up garbage, joined our local community association, ran alleyway cleanups. Uh, we were quote unquote, the model tenants. And then our property got sold to a property development firm. And then suddenly, very slowly at first, the units started emptying up and new tenants weren't put in. And we were like, okay, this is odd, but we're fine. We're protected by law. We're tenants, we have a lease, we pay our rent every month. We are perfectly fine. Nothing could, bad could absolutely happen to us. And then the ceiling fell in in our bathroom. We're on the second floor of a third story building, which meant the unit above us flooded during the rain and collapsed the entire ceiling into our bathtub. It was gone. And we were like, oh crap, this is horrible. We of course did what any tenant would do. We called bylaw. We got a bylaw officer to come out and inspect the unit and issue an order to comply. A few days later, we all, the last few tenants in the building got N13s. Shame. Yeah. Shame. And um, we were all told that we, we had to, to remove the building. I wasn't gonna go. I'm an activist. I fought it. We fought it for a year. I took it to the landlord tenant board. I got uh, orders to comply. The landlord didn't even show up at the LTB hearing the first time. We got a default judgment against the landlord, got our rent abated, everything seemed fine. And then the landlord hired a paralegal and then refiled with the landlord saying they never got the paperwork. And we, we moved, but we went from paying $1,100 a month with our heat included to $1,600 a month with electric heat. And I don't have to tell you if anybody knows what electric heat is like in these winters. Our hydro bills are four or $500 in the winter, and it's ridiculous. And I'm a person of relative privilege. Like, I have a full-time job, I, I navigate systems very well, I do municipal policy and advocacy incredibly well. So I used every tool available in our system to fight this rent eviction, and I couldn't win. It doesn't matter if you pay your rent on time. These are shady people who have come to our city to grab up as much real estate as they can, to jack the rents on that real estate as much as they can. And it's incumbent on all of us to push our elected officials, people who are running for office, to make the change. Because we know the provincial government isn't doing it. The federal government says it's not their jurisdiction. So. I encourage everyone who's here today to go knock doors for a, any candidate who promises to help address rent evictions. Go do that. It's incumbent on all of you. I see a lot of people here. We are in the last few days of an election. Please go out and do that. You know, exercise your democratic right and vote, of course. Get your neighbors to vote, but go knock doors. Go make phone calls. Go work for people who are behind you. I see a few people running for office today here who are standing here beside you. Talk to them. To see if you can spend a couple of hours working on their campaign. Thank you so much. Hi, I am Jamie. I live over there at Nine Garfield. Um, there, there's uh, three, three other tenants in the, uh, sorry, two other tenants in the building. Uh, they're in the middle of renovations, uh, that's why I want to meet over here in case my landlord's coming in, popping in and out. Uh, I haven't really met them yet, they just took over the property and they automatically handed everybody N13s. Uh, the garages used to be rented out for fairly, fairly cheap, I think it was under 100 bucks, I think around 75. They kicked all, everybody out of the garages and instantly uh, rented them out for 300 e for each garage. Um, I'm coming. We're supposed to be out at the end of October for October 31st is supposed to be our last day. Uh, we can't really find anywhere else for temporary situations. They just want to do renov uh, the renovations and uh, we want, we're in negotiations. Um, we chose to do um, a first rate or first refusal, but they haven't really mentioned anything about that. They keep coming back out with cash offers. Uh, the tenant that used to be on the first floor is a 69 year old man. Uh, they, they paid um, 7500 and they moved him upstairs. Uh, his rent was around 800 and now it's doubled up to 1500 Shame! Uh, Shame. We're, tr we're, we've tried, we're trying to do our best to accommodate the landlord and getting out so they can do the renovations. 
but I, I, we can't, out of two months, we've gotten two callbacks on an apartment and we've only seen those two and we are denied by the rest. We can't really afford anywhere else and I need a two bedroom, there's my daughter and my, my wife and myself and uh, we just, we're kind of lost right now. We don't really know where, what to do, where to go. Because if it come, we've been through this before with this place and she, uh, my wife didn't know her rights and she signed the N11 and we couldn't find anywhere and we actually ended up two days homeless walking on the streets when my daughter was in a buggy. And when I took this place, I begged for it. And we've been through two different landlords. I can't get nothing fixed. I've been asking for my back door fixed since we moved in because it's been kicked in before. And I don't really know much what else to say. I just don't really know what to do because I'm trying to help them by by leaving, but it's so hard because we can't find anywhere else, especially for a temporary situation for three months. It's nearly next to impossible. So I'm just worried, me and my family's worried that we're going to end up homeless again and nowhere else to go. People move out, they throw some laminate on top of the flooring and put a counter in, and now the rent is double and triple. Um, the N13 that they issued us said that pretty much they said that they were condemning the building. Not really sure how they're condemning the building when they had new tenants moving in during the time of our our uh, N13 and the procedures. Shame. Um, we contacted uh, counselors. Uh, we got uh, Narendra Nan was one of the people that we contacted, um, and you know tried to get as much help as we could just to have us stay here because really when they're offering us these buyouts there's no place that we could even move to that would be comparable to the rent that you're paying you know five years ago 20 years ago in some uh, situations um, the buyouts they were offering were two three thousand dollars it's wh what are you doing with that you know what i mean in this uh, current rental market so why can't the same people that are going after their mom that Maybe took a side job for a few extra dollars. Exactly. Why are we going after her instead right. of these guys that are literally trying to make you do not have a place to live? No kidding. All right, so I've lived here for uh, we lived here for about three and a half years. Um, our rent is fairly cheap compared to anywhere else that we've heard about. People we pay seven twenty five a month. Um, we've, we've been going through rent eviction uh, papers and crap like that for the last uh, since January. Um, the old owner sold it sold it to Rye, uh, executive who uh, called himself Mr. Cashflow, uh, Anthony Pinozo. Um, he, he got another company under his own name, took it over like a month later or something, and it's called uh, uh, Rise now, and it's run by Rise. They don't do anything around here but give you eviction notices for to leave so they can renovate. The other two fellas have been gone since July. He's He had a, a dumpster there for one night, one day, one night and the next day that's it he so he didn't he told the adjudicator he was going to take out all the outer walls in each apartment he took out one wall upstairs one wall he's not taking out all the walls he's not doing all the plumbing one person took a buyout and they more than doubled the rent after they renovated pretty sure they did that illegally too no permits no nothing and they don't do anything for anybody around here except for leave garbage out here that they don't clean up and this note on the door that has been here this garbage has been here for a couple weeks now and they don't do anything about it they just want to put they just want to go in put new washers and dryers rent it out for more than double or triple the amount uh exactly like the last guy who we were speaking with uh if that was the same company i have no idea but it sounds like the same mo the reality is in every single neighborhood across ward three we have had people coming in, buying our properties, turning them into multi-units, and or taking multi-units and, and just gracefully flipping them and jacking up rent. It's happening across the entire city, it's happening across the entire province, and it's been happening across the entire country. And as mentioned earlier today from ACORN representatives, the municipality of New Westminster in British Columbia was the first municipality in Canada to set up an anti-rent eviction bylaw regime. And that is putting into municipal power for enforcement that says that when a tenant's unit is going to be renovated, that tenant has the right to go back into that unit. 
right now, Hamilton is, um, the city has hired a consultant to see if we can adopt the um, policy that New Westminster BC has. They have a policy that it's on the landlord. If the landlord wants to renovate, he's responsible to find the tenant a new apartment at the same rate or thereabouts and they still get to come back but it's on the landlord it's not on the tenant mm -hmm. the tenant can't be thrown into the street and the motive for the landlord is to raise the rental oh prices. definitely definitely so they to, make to trouble money back oh more oh, oh hand over yeah. fist yeah. hand over fist and this is contributing to the housing crisis exactly it's contributing to gentrification pushing low-income uh, families out of the city right and, and and causing people to double up triple up I think the first thing is they have to put the onus on the landlord to be responsible in order not to make a person or a family homeless mm -hmm. they should be responsible yes. they're the ones that are going to get the benefits of all this it's about ensuring dignified housing and not creating squalor Right? For everybody else who can afford these jacked up renovated spaces. And you gotta ask yourself, who am I standing beside in this very moment? Are you standing beside people who are going to fight for you day in and day out, month after month, year after year, supporting thousands of tenants who are being forced out of eviction during a pandemic, holding landlords accountable and saying, when the home is the only safe place we can be during the lockdown, how dare you? How dare you try to send people out of their homes while we are facing a global pandemic? Yay. Sisters, brothers, and friends in between all have been writing letters nonstop to landlords across Ward 3 trying to hold them accountable and appeal to their humanity to stop vilifying people who are homeless. Woo! To start vilifying people who are experiencing health crisis Woo! in the global pandemic and instead yes. united in solidarity with everybody in our community. Support, love, health, respect, humanity. So when I talk about an anti rent eviction bylaw regime, this is not just about taking off a new enforcement regime for the city. This is about protecting our neighbors. This is protecting tenants who have been a part of our community, our fabric for decades, who I am proud to call my neighbor, and who I'm proud to have supported during the pandemic, and who I will stand for in this next term of council nonstop and ensure that we have the best bylaw regime to stop run evictions from happening, that we have a licensing regime that says that every landlord in this city has to have a license because let's be clear, it is a business. Yeah. 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 Businesses are required to be licensed so that they can be held accountable. Our spaces that are supposed to be dignified have to be held accountable. I think there's two wards in Hamilton now that have the piloting program for landlords li licensing. Stop the greed! Stop the greed! Stop the greed! Address the need! Stop the greed! Address the need! Stop the greed! Address the need! The greed that creates homelessness, the greed that creates people looking for escape and medicine as we keep getting victimized in this capitalist structure. I lived at 468 James Street North. It had been sold twice before we got our dem eviction notices and we knew we were gonna be out. In March of 2021, I received an N13. It gave us 90 days to vacate the property. As you can see, I'm on disability. I was already on a fixed income and I could have barely afford that rent, which was affordable. It was 525 a month. Once we knew it was going to be sold, uh, uh, there was three other people in the building along with us. So the four of us started looking for new places to live. And it was then that I knew it was going to be impossible. It wasn't going to happen. June 2021, 
well, over that three month period, I eliminated my health and my food so I could prepare to survive. I had to buy a generator, not only to keep my scooter charged, but my medical equipment charged, my phone charged so I could stay in touch with doctors. I had to buy a tent, I had to get a sleeping bag, I had to get a wagon to pull behind the scooter just so I could move my stuff. I was an established photographer. I lost tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. All my clothing, all my furniture, everything got left behind in that building. I couldn't afford to get storage for it. So basically my entire life was destroyed by this one piece of paper. My first experience being homeless, I was at uh, Bayfront Park on Strong. I was only there for three days and we were told we had to move. Now, after setting up a camp and setting up some place that you think you're going to be okay, and then they come and tell you you have to move right away. My phone got stolen within the first few days. And that's when I realized, okay, well, there's a totally different life out here. And it is a different life. It has changed me forever. I never used to carry weapons. I'll tell you right now, I carry an arsenal because I'm terrified. I've had people coming into my camp. I had to set up alarms, threatening to kill you, coming in with pipes. And unless you retaliate or defend yourself, you'll end up another statistic. And the sad part is, is they just said the other day that since I believe October, November 21 to May of 2022, they've estimated that 10 homeless people have died. I guarantee it's a lot more because I know most of them. Met them while I was on the street. There's 8.5 million different species of animals on the face of this planet. And we call ourselves humane. We call ourselves intelligent. How dare we treat other people like that? Where's your humanity? Where's your heart? Where's your caring? And it can happen to anybody. Your house will get bought out. You'll be out on the street and people look at you in disgust. It has changed my life completely. My health is 10 times worse than it was. My mental stability and my stress levels have gone through the roof and I will never be the same person I was before and the building that I was in was torn down and it is now an empty property the city can change it the politicians can change it you say you're only one voice you're not you're one of a million voices those voices need to stand up and be heard thank you like even in Hamilton right now the like the homeless, you see them. You mm -hmm. see them being evicted from the parks. Mm -hmm. Like they have nowhere to go. They're living in tents in the woods. Yeah. That seems like something far-fetched. I agree. You know, like, yeah. A loss of I, would, I would die. I would die. I get cold going from my house to the car. You know, I couldn't I imagine sleeping outdoors in a tent. And you have um, COPD. I have COPD mm -hmm. and I have uh, back issues. I have a Harrington rod in my back and, you know, other health issues. And it, it's just, you know, but the adjudicator didn't care none about that. She said four or five times, do you, you know, do you realize that you're going to be putting, making people homeless? And he said, yeah, but I need to get the work done. He didn't need to get the work done. We reached out to ACORN and they have been instrumental in supporting us via education, resources, procuring us legal representation, and easing our minds. We here at 1, 3, and 7 Grosvenor fully support ACORN's demands for tenant protection from tenant displacement. We stand by them in the need for a strong policy to be passed next year. Not only for us, but those who are unaware that there is help and feel lost and have to resort to homelessness. No one deserves to go through the struggles that we're all going through when affordable housing is being destroyed. We need homes over profits. Tenants can't wait any longer. Help us put an end to unnecessary gentrification. Thank you. And we
we, we have to start knowing what our rights are, you know, because we, we just can't sit back and blindly let them come at us, you know, from each angle, because you, you don't know what they're going to throw at you. You know, they're, they're telling us lies. We're thinking it's real. You can create your own tenant organization or come and join ACORN because I called them and said, you know, and said, you know, what can I do? I got this paper and, and they walked me through it and I had a meeting with Olivia and uh, another girl there. And, um, you know, and ever since then, it's, we've just been a, you know, we're like a, a new family because we're looking out for each other. ACORN, we're, we're, I don't know where I'd be without them because I wouldn't have met you and I wouldn't have a place to go to. So that's, that's one saving grace there. But they're, they're out for each other. They watch out for each other because you can't go and fight by yourself, a landlord, when they have legal, legal people and you don't. And the, the, the city sees a need for that too or it wouldn't be there. So they're, you know, they're coming at us, but the city's helping a bit. And um, yeah, get a hold of Acorn, just Google, Google Acorn. Make your own little tenant thing. You know, have a weekly get together so that everybody knows what the landlord's doing to everybody. You know, it's not a gossip fest or anything like that. You know, you just wanna know that what your rights are and you know, that you can be safe. You know, it's not, not pitting the tenants against the landlord. It's, it's the tenants knowing what rights they have. You know, if I didn't have the friend of a friend, I would be on the street. Yeah. How did you feel when you were told that there's an opportunity? Oh my God, what a relief. Yeah. It was like somebody was on my shoulders and they, you know, she pushed them off. Yes. It was, and it's been a relief for both of us. Right. Because you and your you're, daughter. Right, because you're saving both of us, yeah. not only me. Wow. You know, and uh, it's... It was so hard because we didn't know where we were going or what we were going to do. You know, it, it's just, it, it's awful and it's happening more and more.